Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a super cool little tool from our friends at Sonic Academy. Uh, we've got Node that we're going to be checking out. Uh, if you guys own a Wavetable synth, anything like Serum, Dune 3, uh, anything that's capable of importing um, Wavetables or custom Wavetables, uh, you're definitely going to want to check this out. It's a super clever little tool. I've had it for a while on beta test and actually uh, did some of the presets for this as well. Um, it's out now from Sonic Academy. As always, if you guys are enjoying these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so you guys stay up to date with all our future videos. Let's dive into Cubase and check this out. Right, so here we have Node up and running. So Node essentially is a wavetable editor for creating your own wavetables for synths like Serum, Dune, uh, whatever will import wavetables. Um, now Serum does have quite an advanced wavetable editor, but for the most part, a lot of these um, wavetable editors and these synths, they basically take frames and then uh, crossfade between the frames which is not always the most accurate way of doing it. Uh, I know Serum does have a spectral fade tool, which is better. Um, the only other sort of really advanced wavetable editor that I quite like is the one from Halion 6. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's a whole different beast that it's a very complex synth to use. Now, if you wanted to create wavetables for something like Anna 2 or Dune or whatever, this is a really fantastic way to do it. And I'm gonna show you why. Firstly, we're just going to create a wave uh, just by using the nodes. We're going to draw in a wave uh, and basically modify it. So you've got all your frames along the bottom here. You've got a little slider which will slide through your frames. Let's just get a uh, wave in here. We're going to draw in a square, for example. Let's do this. And we'll put another node there. So now we have a square wave. We can play this back. So there's our square wave, and the beauty with node is that you can now adjust these nodes to morph between these frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable these frames now first, and we can copy our square wave that we've drawn over to the last node. Uh, you can also, um, there's a bank of uh, wave tables or shapes that you can insert here. There are more in the full version as well. Um, but what we're gonna do now is take a look at how these morph. So it just, I'm very quickly gonna create a pulse width modulation wavetable, just from our square wave that we've done. So we've got our first square wave, we're gonna draw in uh, some modifications to this one here. We're basically just gonna reduce the pulse width of our square here, just by dragging these out. And let's take a listen now to what happens when we play through the wavetable. <laughs> You can also enable automatic uh, uh, LFO that will just sweep through the wavetable while you're busy uh, working on them. Now that's great, that's uh, all good and well though, but what if you want to start doing slightly more complex wavetables? Um, now this is where it really kind of shines, is when you start importing your own audio samples in. Uh, now, like I mentioned, the problem with importing audio samples is it'll often just crossfade between the two, which is not the most accurate way of of doing this. So let's um, initialize this patch. I've got, just for the sake of this demo, two uh, single cycles I pulled out of uh, Diva, just of the Minimoog oscillators. And um, we're going to use these two to create a, another pulse width modulation, but with a actual sampled wave instead. I'm going to just drag these in, drag and drop functionality, which is great. Uh, so we can enable these selectors here just to make sure that we get the full wave. Once we've got our selection, and if you're bringing in a large file, uh, you can do that as well and just select segments of the file. Um, but in this case, we're just using a single sample or a single cycle. We can, once we've got our selection, just drag this one into our first uh, table. And let's bring in the second sample, which is the pulse. Let's make sure that those are selected properly again. And we'll drag that into the last one. 
So once again, we're going to disable the other frames in the middle and take a look at our waveforms. So if we fade between the two now, you can hear it's going from the square to the pulse, but there's no actual PWM effect occurring there at all. It's essentially just volume crossfading between the two of them, which is not really what we want. Um, so what we're going to do now is trace nodes over our waveform to basically set morph targets, which will tell node which parts of the actual wave it should move uh, to create the effect that we want. Um, I'm going to right click here and just normalize these first, uh, just so that we have them at, at their maximum volumes. And uh, let's check out our first frame now. Uh, we're going to enable the nodes. I'm just looking basically at, we've got sort of one peak, two, maybe at the zero crossing, three, and then four. So uh, let's uh, do, turn off the wavetable, add a couple of nodes. That should do. We can always add more if we need later. Turn the wavetable on and then turn the nodes back on again as well. So let's drag our number two up to the peak over here. And you can see this wave, you've got some sort of um, some harmonics or some extra noise and stuff up at the top there, which is kind of giving this, uh, making this wave a little bit more real, um, which is what we want. But we're just going to kind of roughly, we're going to need a few more nodes here. I'm going to kind of roughly just trace this, just add in a few, add in two extras just in case. And turn our nodes back on again. So we're going to do this point here. We'll do our zero crossing. We'll do this point here. And that point there before it drops back to zero again. So that's our mini Moog square wave. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to our pulse and enable the nodes on this one. You can see the nodes are now um, in different positions here. We're gonna try and line these up uh, with the positions that they were here. So we knew that our initial peak is up at the top. And our second one was this little section over here. So we're gonna bring that right down to here. We have the zero crossing at four. Let's just double check, zero crossing was four. We have our five over there and six coming back up around about there. So let's take a look at what happens now. Take a look at the wavetable. Instead of having the crossfading, it's now actually morphing the wavetable the same way that a PWM uh, effect would. And let's take a listen to this now. So that's a much more realistic um, effect that we're getting. Obviously, by adding in a few extra frames, you'd get this even more accurate. You can see there's some quantization occurring right there. Uh, but if we were to sample the uh, pulse, at, instead of just 100% pulse and the square, if we did a 25%, 50 and 75% pulse and inserted them into this here, there and there, and then set the morphing targets, you'd get a much more um, accurate representation of that pulse width modulation occurring. So really super, super clever little tool this. Um, I'll go through just a few of the presets. Uh, these are some of the newer ones. There are a, m a whole bunch more presets in the full version. I'm still using the beta at this point. Um, I'll take a look at some of these. These ones just ones that I've drawn in. Uh, let's take a look at, this was a through zero saw. This is interesting because you can actually get some sort of um, amplitude modulation effects with the saw as it passes through zero. Uh, these ones also drawn in. Uh, let's take a look at ones that use sort of slightly more complex waveforms. This is from, uh, let's take a look at, well, something like this one uh, was also just drawn in called From Hills to City Skylines. Started off with a sine wave.
So this one was actually a vocoder voice sample that I used, and I cut out a few frames out of this and then added the morph targets into this. You can see as we move through it, how it moves around, uh, and you can check each one of these has got different morph targets put in for the wave. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like as well. And I'll quickly just show you, um, we'll take something uh, quite odd, like uh, let's take a kick sample, for example. Um, I'm just going to pull one in from my sample library. I'll grab the kick. And we can bring the, bring the kick in as our sample. And you can see here, now you can actually select sections of the kick. Let's just take this for example. Um, you can also, if you turn these off, you can divide and double the selection there. Uh, we'll go with this. And then let's move our selection slightly further down to pull out a different section of the wave. Let's add this, this one in here for example. Maybe extended to almost the whole kick as well you get the idea and um, now we can turn these off and go in and do our morph targets once again um, but you can hear kind of what you get from this so that's just from a from a kick uh, that we can play around with let's put that one in there and once again we'll go and add some anchors now I'm just I'm doing this for very quickly just to kind of uh, demonstrate how you go about setting these up so I'm not going to do this incredibly accurately but just for the sake of the demo let's just kind of put these kind of wherever and just take a look again how it's uh, using these to morph the wavetables. So we'll jump into this one now. And if we set this sort of halfway, you can kind of see exactly how this is affecting the audio just by dragging these around. Um, let's just move these kind of randomly. Uh, so now just take a listen, uh, take a look again at how the waveform is actually reacting to these morph targets. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, the basic premise of it. It's uh, pretty cheap. I think it's 20 pounds to pick this up. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you're into sound design, if you're using wavetable synth uh, synths, this really is a no-brainer for me. It's an incredibly clever little tool. Uh, from here, you can go and export your, um, your waveforms. Uh, if we go to export... Uh, you can batch export as well. Uh, certain synths will use different size wavetables as well. Uh, what you can do is just set these all up to whatever you need. 1024, 2048, let's go 4096 and 8192. Uh, you can set where your first frame is to the number of frames that you have. Set a file name and you can export all in one go. So you can actually bring these into multiple synths as well. You just need to double check which synths are requiring what uh, wavetable size before you bring them in. And uh, yeah, you just import them and your wavetables are all good to go. So yeah, definitely go check this out. Node, super, super clever little piece of software. I highly recommend you check this one out and just go over to www.sonicacademy.com and you can check this out for yourself. Great guys, I will catch you again soon here on the Marula Music channel. Like I said, if you enjoy these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, and I will catch you guys again soon. Cheers.